Good evening. I'm going to call to order the November 18th, 2024 school committee meeting. This meeting is being held in person and or remotely as an alternate means of public access pursuant to Chapter 2 of the Acts of 2023 and all other applicable laws temporarily amending certain provisions of the open meeting law. You are hereby advised that this meeting and all communications during this meeting may be recorded by the Town of Hingham in accordance with the open meeting law. If any participant wishes to record this meeting, please notify the chair at the start of the meeting in accordance with Mass General Law, Chapter 30A, Section 20F, so that the chair may inform all other participants of said recording. Um, we will be um, adjourning to executive session and returning to open session at 6.30. Does somebody want to make a motion? I will make a motion to enter into executive session and to reconvene an open session pursuant to Mass General Law Chapter 30A, Section 21A3, for the purposes of to discuss matters related to the Hingham Food Service Association and collective bargaining contracts for 2024-2025, as an open meeting may have a detrimental effect on the bargaining position of the public body. And the chair so declares. I so declare. And to approve minutes from the exe executive session held on October 15th, 2024, and November 4th, 2024, as an open meeting may have a detrimental effect on the bargaining position, and the chair so declares. I so declare. Oh, did you say both dates? I said both Sorry, days. I'm sorry. Okay. All right. Um, all those in favor? Carrie? Aye. Michelle? Aye. Allie? Aye. Jen? Aye. Matt? Aye. And I'm an aye as well. Thank you. Good evening. I am going to call to order or recall to order the November 18th, 2024 school committee meeting. Uh, read this statement quickly. Um, this meeting is being held in person and or remotely as an alternate means of public access pursuant to Chapter 2 of the Acts of 2023 and all other applicable laws temporarily amending certain provisions of the open meeting law. You are hereby advised that this meeting and all communications during this meeting may be recorded by the Town of Hingham in accordance with the open meeting law. If any participant wishes to record this meeting, please notify the chair at the start of the meeting in accordance with Mass General Law, Chapter 30A, Section 20F, so that the chair may inform all other participants of said recording. We have Harbor Media recording this evening, as well as um, recording on Zoom for minutes purposes of the minutes. Um, is there anybody in the audience recording? No. Okay, so um, we started our meeting this evening at six and we adjourned into executive session. Um, we are returning into open session. We have an action coming out of that. Um, we have an agreement with the Food Services Association on collective bargaining. And when we have that, um, a member of the chair of the select board becomes a member of the school committee. So we have Joe Fisher joining us this evening. Thank you, Joe, for being here. Um, and I thought I would give Carrie the, um, the honor of letting us know what was negotiated before we take a motion to vote. Great, thank you. Um, so we have a tentative agreement between the Food Services Union and the Salary Negotiate, the School Committee um, on a one-year contract. Um, this was done at the union's request um, because they're going through some, they're organi reorganizing themselves. Um, so they wanted to have a one-year contract in place and then we'll um, work on a longer one later this year. Um, we met twice, and I just want to thank uh, Joan Moore and her team for their collaboration and their thoughtful discussion. Um, it, was, it was a pleasure to work with them. Um, as you know, food services is a little different than the other unions because it is funded um, through the revolving account. So it's, um, it has a kind of a net neutral um, effect on the operating budget. Um, there are a few uh, major changes. We did increase the wages at all levels, including the managers and assistant managers, to bring them up to a competitive market rate. Um, this was, we can afford that through the revolving account, and this will help us attract and uh, retain the great people we have working in the department. 
Uh, we restructured the bonus. So um, the, the old bonus was a participation bonus, um, but with now free lunches for everyone, that doesn't really make sense. So this was, will be a performance bonus instead. Um, so they will have to get a meets expectations on evaluations to, um, to access that. Um, and then there were a few other things. We added some paid holidays. Um, and um, define the work year, I guess, are the two other ones. So it's 182 days. So it's a student school year plus two days at the beginning of the year. So we thought it was important to define that. Um, so uh, it's just such an important group of employees. Um, we really, I mean, our, our students aren't going to be able to learn if they aren't um, fed and nourished. And so it was really clear the care and effort they put into it every day. Um, so we're very grateful for that. So I just want to, again, thank Joan and her team um, and also um, Superintendent Roberts and Aisha Pong, uh, Michelle Alley, and especially Kim Smith, um, the Director of Food Services. She was ex um, extremely helpful in working through all of this. So does anyone have any questions or? Any questions? <clears throat> no. All right. Thank you. And thank you yeah. to the Salary Negotiations and Food yeah. Services. We appreciate it. It's, it's exciting that it was done in two. Yeah. Yeah, it was, it was great. <laughs> so. All right. Does somebody want to make a motion? Um, sure. I will make a motion to approve the um, Memorandum of Agreement with the Hingham Food Service Association for um, contracts 2024 to 2025. I will second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Carrie? Aye. Michelle? Aye. Allie? Aye. Jen? Aye. Matt? Aye. Joe? Aye. And I'm an eye as well. Thank you. Um, Joe, you're welcome to stay, um, but you don't need to. I appreciate you being here. I appreciate all the work. This is, this is a great job. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. All right, moving over to item five, approval of the minutes. We've got two sets of minutes to approve this evening. I will make a motion to approve the minutes from the school committee meeting held on October 15th, 2024. I will second. Any discussion? Uh, yeah, I just had one thing. Yep. For, for the um, adjourning to executive session at the end, um, it doesn't, the, they don't reflect, reflect a roll call vote, which I know we okay, did do. So if we could just add that, that would be helpful. Thank you. Anything else? How do you think this vote? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we can attempt it. <laughs> so, <laughs> so. Doing that to Carrie's name lately. <laughs> I will make a motion to approve the minutes of the school committee meeting held on October 15th, 2024, with the amended changes. I will second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? <coughs> Carrie? Aye. Michelle? Aye. Allie? Aye. Jen? Aye. Matt? Aye. And I'm an aye as well. I will make a motion to approve the minutes of the Hingham School Committee with Advisory Committee held on November 4th, 2024. Um, I will second. Um, so no discussion. I do that. have something that came up on this one. Um, under the minutes, there's the, um, we started talking about the DOC and authorizing the superintendent and the DOC pledge. Um, it says that the items were to be tabled, which they were, but it, um, I think we had discussed it, um, so I thought we could move that and basically say that we had discussed it um, and reflect that in the minutes. I can do that. And I'll make the same edit to this one, the last one. Thank you. Question? Um, no, but my motion was wrong because it says with advisory committee. It wasn't with advisory oh. committee. No. So scratch my motion. Okay. <laughs> okay I was just reading advisory. <laughs> <laughs> Chair might make another motion. You may make another motion. I will make a motion um, to approve the minutes of the Hingham School Committee held on November 4th, 2024. I will second. With the amended changes. Thank you. <laughs> okay, all those in favor? Carrie? Aye. Michelle? Aye. Allie? Aye. Jen? Aye. Matt? Aye. And I'm an aye as well. All right, thank you. Okay, back to my agenda. All right, um, item six. So this is the part of the meeting where we have set aside 15 minutes to take questions and comments for things that are not on tonight's agenda. Um, before I go into reading the speech, does anybody have anything that they would like to bring up? 
All right, not seeing any, so I'm gonna jump over to item seven, which is the superintendent's report. Katie. Perfect. Well, thank you. Um, over the past few weeks, we have engaged in a variety of community outreach activities um, in order to increase our visibility in the community. Um, so many thanks to Ness Carenti and Jen Benham and uh, Aisha Opong, who joined me uh, last week at the Local Governance Academy. This is a new town initiative uh, where community members can get to know our local town departments including the school department so we uh, shared an overview of Hingham Public Schools programming and functions uh, did a tour of the Hingham High School and then we had a surprise um, kind of cap to the evening where our community members were able to watch the uh, Hingham High Jazz Band for us so that was a great evening um, on Saturday November 9th Heather Cashman and I hosted a table at the Hingham Farmers Market uh, we enjoyed meeting current Hingham families and really enjoyed meeting um, some families that that had much uh, younger children who are not yet in the Hingham Public Schools, so I got to meet those families that will be with us soon. And lastly, um, I did uh, have a chance to meet with the Interfaith Clergy Group who invited me to speak at one of their lunches. Um, that group is working on a number of mental health initiatives that complement the work of the town and um, the school. So it was nice to uh, see that synergy and some of the commonalities of the projects that we were working on. Um, throughout the month of November, uh, there were many school-based celebrations in honor of Veterans Day, including a terrific one at South Schools. So Tara uh, Boning and Jen Driscoll are here tonight, and um, we was so well attended. Many community members, parents, grandparents, um, and extended community members who had uh, served uh, were there and were serenaded and um, very uh, welcomed by our South School students. I similarly had a chance to attend um, the Veterans Day Assembly at Town Hall where our high school band performed and uh, high school chorus student Nick Roach actually uh, performed as well and did a terrific solo. So thank you to our students and staff for organizing and participating in these ceremonies and thank you of course to our veterans. Um, also in the spirit of thanks, I wanted to thank the more than 750 students, staff and family and community members who participated in the Portrait of a Graduate survey. Um, so the steering committee will now take all of the data from that survey, as well as input that we sought through focus groups, and we'll compile that into a comprehensive Portrait of a Graduate uh, document. So we look forward to sharing that document in late January, early February, and so stay tuned for updates on that. Um, this week, the hottest ticket in town is, of course, for Hades Town. I hope I'm not stealing your thunder, uh, Slater, on your uh, student report tonight. Um, but that um, pres that uh, performance kicks off on Thursday, Friday, and Saturday evenings, and we have over 60 Hingham High students involved in both the cast crew and the production team. So make sure um, to get your tickets for that event. Um, in fall athletics, we are uh, rounding out the fall season and would like to thank uh, coaches, captains, and players for all of their um, teamwork this fall. Uh, we, of course, um, are excited about the tournament play. We have one more team still in the tournament. Um, and uh, we are, of course, proud of the tournament play and championships, but we're most proud of the 80% participation rate that we have in high school athletics. And so congratulations to all of the participants in Unified Basketball cross country, rowing, crew, soccer, golf, volleyball, field hockey, dance team, and football for all of their dedication and teamwork this fall. is the homemade beeswax lip balm from the uh, high school green team. I buy that every year and also um, make a, a gifts out of the Hingham Hughes and Parents uh, lunch boxes as well. But many great items there and just uh, nice to be able to support our students in that way. And then finally, um, I did include a communication in your uh, packet this evening uh, from Desi, um, which um, provide some initial guidance on the impact of the recent vote on question two, the ballot vote, um, but they have promised much more comprehensive guidance to be coming up to districts as we um, figure out our district determined graduation requirements and what that will look like. So, great. Thank you. Any questions? Yeah. All right. Um, moving over to item eight, communications. Um, Katie reported on the communications received by the superintendent. Uh, student communications later. Uh, not much to report. Um, students at the high school are 
getting used to the new lunch line and that's about it and excited for the Hades Town early presentation uh, later this week. The new lunch line? Uh, yeah, new lunch line organization. Uh, okay. changes. Your kids haven't talked to you? I know. I, <laughs> I may or may not have heard some buzz about that in my own house. Yeah. 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 I may have heard about it too. Yeah. 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 I get nothing. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> yeah, now that my uh, 16 year old can drive, she just, yeah, doesn't tell me anything. <laughs> um, all right, other communications, anything received by the school committee? No? Okay, item nine, unfinished business. We do have a few items tonight. Um, 9.1, 9.2, and 9.3 all relate to the dock. We had started talking about this at our last uh, meeting. Um, and Aisha's got an update for us, so I, I will let her to kick that off. Okay, all right, thank you. Um, so we're excited because um, I think everything is coming together on the dock in terms of financing and in terms of um, construction as well. Um, so tonight there are three tasks that I need your help with as well and approval on. First of all, to approve the contract for the dock. And um, secondly, um, to authorize our superintendent, acting superintendent, Judy Roberts, to um, sign the dock contract for construction. And one that, once that happens, I think we actually have a construction meeting planned for Thursday. So that will get things going right away. Thirdly, and most importantly, is in, the, in terms of the, um, the financing of the dock project. As you know, that the financing of, that, of this project is going to be done solely um, with Hingham Sports Partnership. And what, what they've done so far is that um, in terms of the overall cost of the project, the overall cost of the project um, comes to $1.5 million. Um, let me just open this up here. And in terms of the $1.573,512, um, that includes all of the expenses, including the budget document that is attached to your folder. South Shore Bank and um, Hingham Sports Partnership. That tripartite uh, arrangement is secured against a $200,000 line of credit with South, South Shore Bank, and the payments for the for that part of the um, of that part of the those payments will be made over to, over three years um, by Hingham Sports Partnership. A third part of it is another pledge document, which is for $176,749 of pledges that have been received so far by Hingham Sports Partnership um, from community members. Um, what Hingham Sports Partnership has done on behalf of those pledges is that um, on, on behalf of those pledges that they've received is to secure um, to us in writing this pledge saying that if it, for any reason one of the pledges were to person were to default on the pledge, they would hold us harmless basically. Um, so in terms of that, we're very thankful and grateful to Hingham Sports Partnership for their, their involvement in this project in terms of construction, in terms of um, daily, weekly meetings, in terms of the financing, in terms of working with us along the way, in terms of getting those pledges put together to make sure that we're, we're very confident that in terms of all the financing, we will get the funds back and be able to um, 
enjoy, the kids will be able to enjoy the building. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and I guys, echo yeah. what Aisha had said, like the, the team has been fantastic. They're right. just uh, exactly. yeah, on the phone with them all the time. So yeah, um, yeah I appreciate everything they've done for us. Are we uh, proving <coughs> the grant from Senator Connor's office tonight? Or are we holding no, on the that? The grant is not going to come to us. The grant is going to go to Hingham Sports okay. Partnership. So we've already approved the 1.5 million of the total grant from okay. Hingham Sports Partnership. So I think the pledges will just need to have the approval tonight. Well, four things for approval, um, including the pledges to give uh, you know, the chair mm -hmm. um, the authorization to sign the pledge on, on your behalf. Uh, okay. Any questions? No? Okay. All right. I'll do one at a time here. Okay. All right. I will make a motion to approve two pledges from the Hingham Sports Partnership. One to secure pledges to be received from Hingham Sports Partnership donors and to a tri-party pledge with South Shore Bank and Hingham Sports Partnership secured against 200,000 line of credit and to authorize the chair to sign these pledges on behalf of the school committee. I will second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Aye. Sorry, I was waiting for a roll call vote and then realized we're all here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. Okay, I will make a motion uh, hold on. I'm missing one. The water approval 9.1. This is the contractor one? Yes, please. Okay. I will make a motion to approve the contract for construction bid for the dock. All right. To award the contract to, to construct the building, the dock. To R. Mullen Associates and to authorize the acting superintendent to execute the contract on behalf of the school committee. Second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? No. Okay. Um, that should be it. That's Is it. that it? Mm -hmm. Okay. What? Oh, we had three on here. Three. Superintendent. Three. Yeah, we just did we that. We just did that one. Yeah, we did. Yeah, there you go. Okay. I combined yeah, the two. Yeah. yeah. We did everything. Okay. Yep. Thank you. Okay. All right. Thank you. All right. <laughs> Wonderful. Okay. Um, all right. So that that's, takes us to 9.4 um, to discuss the purchase of electric school buses and act as appropriate. Again, I'll pass it over to Aisha. She's got an update for us. So just to remind you, we had talked about this. Um, we got a presentation at our Saturday planning session. Um, so Aisha's got an update. Right, and um, it's just as, as um, Mrs. Carenti mentioned, it's, this is just an update in terms of where we landed um, from our last meeting. Um, so we received, I, I don't know if you remember, but we had a presentation at our, our uh, workshop where um, Highland Capital presented us with um, what electrifying in terms of infrastructure, in terms of the lease, and in terms of the service plan. Um, so we we received that information, um, and in terms of the EPA's funding, one of the, the to dos at that time was to request an extension from the EPA. That extension went out, and we did get a 90-day extension, um, but the extension was only for 90 days, and we have to continue requesting um, an extension every <laughs> period until we get to April, um, because they just won't give us a, a full extension for the full state of time. Um, so that's one. And secondly, one of the things that we have to do is to go out with an RFP um, so that Highland, Highland Capital, although they've been working with us very closely for us, and they are not the vendor who definitively will be the chosen vendor. We have to go out to, go out to bid on that and then to decide on who who will actually be received that are, um, who will be the vendor who will move forward and provide those services to us. Um, so at, at this point in time, I will, in the next couple of weeks, I will be what I will be working. One of the things I'll be working on, and once that is done, I'll come back to you to let you know who has been selected in terms of the RFP process from the RFP process, and to also get your approval in terms of a warrant for town meeting. Um, once we know who the vendor is, we know what the pricing would be and the structure of the leases. I think we'll have enough information at that time to go um, to actually have something in the warrant. I gave an example within the document I submitted to show you what the warrants typically um, look like for town meeting from what we've done in the past. It's not very, um, it just gives a, the, lease, the lease length 
um, and what is being requested. There are no dollar amounts in there. That will be a separate decision that would have to be made by you. Um, and in terms of that, I think it may be prudent to wait until we've gone out to bid and to get the final information on that, because at that point in time, we'll, we can then decide whether we want to go five or seven based on the actual pricing that we receive at that point in time. Okay, but so far from the initial um, pricing that we've seen from Highland, it looks like seven years may be the best to move forward with, but I think we should wait until we've chosen a vendor and we've seen everything that's out there. Okay. Um, next question. Yeah. Sure. Uh, when you go out to bid, will you request that that there's similar contract lengths? So if we're comparing, yes, so that they're so it's five to five exactly. or seven to seven yes. years. I think we'll okay. ask for examples in ten of a similar way. We reviewed it mm -hmm. and we need to choose. I think we'll ask for pricing along that the same lines as well. So right now I've received like um, a few examples of others who have gone out to bid just to see the structure of the, the RFPs that have gone out mm -hmm. and then I'll probably piggyback off of a few of them just to get those out as soon as possible as well. Makes sense. And, and then what is the date the 90 days puts us up to for the extension? So it gets up to, to January, okay. um, but I think we can even at the end of December ask for another 90 days again because okay. they said every month you can request it. Um, I think we're kind of looking at <laughs> yeah, yes, exactly. I think I think too that it's just changing times too, in terms of where we are right now. So I think in terms of making any decisions that are long term, I think mm -hmm. they're probably being prudent as well. Yeah, yeah. I saw that they had changed the and well, it was October they announced the extension for the um, the was it the Car Act? We thought it was going to be twenty twenty five, and they extended that to twenty twenty six. Exactly. Any other questions? Yes. All right. Thank you. All right. Thank you. All right. Item 10, um, new business um, to receive South Elementary School Improvement Plan and act as appropriate. Thank you for your patience and waiting. No, that's fine. Thank you for having me. It's such an honor to be here this evening. So, and thank you to Jen Jo Skull. She's here as a South School support, which is great. Um, certainly for our school improvement plan, the first thing, oh, we'll get it up. The clicker is not this time. It was work. It when it, we practiced, we practiced during, 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 during executive yeah. session, yeah. and it yeah. worked. Yeah. <laughs> Something happens when we go on Zoom and it stops. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So first, I wanted to go ahead and recognize the school council members of the says school committee. Meant to be school council members. Um, we have Eugene Bazitsky, Vanessa Breyer as our school staff members. For parents and guardians, we have Ashley Balaconis and Victoria Smythe. Our community member is Karen Johnson, and school committee liaison is Jen Benham. The school improvement plan, just to give you a little bit of background in the next slide, um, was actually drafted in the spring of 2024, and it was action-oriented with a vision of South for the future. And then what we did this year was, because this plan was for me to carry on. Um, we met with the school council in the beginning just to review it and make sure it was still the same plan that we wanted to see moving forward for, for South School. <laughs> in our next slide, you'll see that our theme for the year at South is what goes together grows together. Um, we have started the year off, we had the school decorator for when students came in, just that theme of we are as an admin team new to the building, we want to grow together. Uh, Jen and I spent the first two months of school, September and October, getting into all classrooms to reach the students and sort of promoted this theme through reading to them just to say like, we're going to grow together, we're going to learn from each other, we're going to build relationships. Um, so it was really nice because in those two months we were able to get into separately every single classroom in the school building um, which was great and one of the books that we read was what we'll build um, i think actually michelle you might have gifted it to to mary at one point so i had taken it with me 
and we talked about one of the, the poignant pieces of that book is I'll build your future and you'll build mine. And we talked about that growth as a school community together. So it was really sweet to, to have that, mo that moment with the students. The South goals, I put them sort of to align here with the strategic plan. So there's a focus on academic excellence. There's a focus on healthy, equitable, and inclusive community culture of collaboration within and beyond South Elementary, and then enhancing the home to school partnership. So you'll see on the next slide, our first goal for the school improvement plan is to ensure high expectations for teaching and learning for all South students. Our action steps, steps here, I'm gonna go ahead and just sort of review the ones in bold, because those are the ones that I really wanted to make sure that we highlighted for the upcoming school year. So we're gonna to continue to provide literacy support to students in grades K to five, with special attention to closing those gaps that exist while using the multi-tier system of supports that we have in place already. It's a pretty robust system in South School. The schedule is great because it offers that time for MTSS blocks for some targeted reading intervention. And also with knowing that we're in year two of interreading, it's been nice for the students to have those small group moments to go ahead and make sure that we are providing any support that's needed, whether it's for intervention or for enrichment purposes. The next action step to focus on here is to provide expanded math intervention to grades K to five using both reflex math and also the targeted math instruction blocks that are at each grade level. Um, Julie Chandler does a great job with our math interventionists within the building, getting into those classrooms and making sure that we are really targeting that math instruction for the students. And down in bold in number six, um, continue the support of the core reading program, which is interreading. Even though it is year two, certainly we are still spending time. We have our PLCs in the morning where students, uh, where teachers are able to meet with Chrissy Swanson for reading, Julie Chandler for math, um, and talk about all of the instruction that is taking place in areas where we might need a little bit more professional development, areas that are working really well for us for interreading, and how it's sort of um, that alignment also with the, the writing component, component that's taking place as well. For goal two, we have create a school environment where all students feel academically challenged, supported, and experience a sense of belonging, all while bringing awareness of student social responsibilities that take place within the school and then also extend beyond the school community. One of the things that we are working on this year is sort of looking at that positive behavior intervention and supports, the PBIS model that was in place um, over time, but sort of refining it and rebuilding it and bringing it back as a focus because it is a great style to have in the building. It's a systems sort of model. So when we build that school matrix, we are able to see that we have explicit instruction on behavior. Um, for example, as, they, as you may have already heard and, and known, but when we talk about reading and math, we would teach the students their letters, their numbers, and then putting that together. But oftentimes with behavior, we just assume, and we don't actually go back to those basics of explicitly teaching what does this behavior look like and what is it that we wanna see. And of course, I'm sure as um, you're all familiar with the Buzz Awards and South School's school pledge and school motto, be kind, be responsible, be respectful, be kinder than necessary, be ready to learn is in there. So we're taking all of those components and sort of reworking them to make sure that they A, still work for the building and what are the tweaks that we might wanna make moving forward. Number five, we have we host um, a South School Shine tonight. This actually takes place in May. Um, for children to share their collections, their talents, their hobbies. It incorporates the arts programming. It incorporates um, our, the Get Smart About Art. We have some music programming that takes place that evening. And that really does help bring the community together. It's a great night for students because they are able to really show off what is important to them and the things that are truly, they, they I went last year while I was coming on board and I thought to myself, this is actually such a great night for students 
and that relationship building that takes place when I'm there and I'm seeing what interests them and where did that hobby come from or where did that talent come from. I realized we had a lot of bakers last year on, on the, the student population. It was really great to see. Um, a lot of students were able to describe, um, some students were really into sewing, crafting. It was really cute. Um, and again, those are small ways in which we create an environment where students feel safe, they feel welcome, they feel loved, and it allows them to be ready to learn. And then the last one that is bolded and highlighted is evaluate ways to have guided and organized stations at recess on a weekly basis and collaborate with our physical education teacher to continue to devote time on the schedule to teaching the playground rules, expectations at recess, and then a specific focus on grades four to five. Um, as you know, students are outside. It's a short block of time where we want them to expend their energy. It's also their time for social interaction. And we want to make sure that we are offering opportunities for students who may want something that is a little bit more organized in nature. And we also want to make an offer for students who want to play a game that might not be sustainable every day at recess, but we can with a little bit of help. One example for this year is the fifth grade students um, came to Mrs. Driscoll and myself and they really wanted to play football. So we talked about what football would look like at recess, um, what type of football they'd be playing. We developed a plan. And every day six, Mr. B is able to come out. We organize the game so that every student is involved. And, and it really has been the students look forward to day six. You know when it's day six because those flag football things are getting, you know, they're going outside. But it's been really nice to see how the students are able to interact. They've built the plan together and then they follow through with it while they're outside. For goal three, goal three and goal four for us um, are all around collaboration, communication. And when I was looking at goal three and goal four, because there were some similarities between the two, I sort of, sort of saw goal three as being the how of communication, and then you'll see in goal four being the what of our communication. So goal three, we have provide our caregiver community. following to highlight continuous and new initiatives that supplement academic and social education. So right now we have that S'more newsletter which goes out on a weekly basis to families. And this year we were able to incorporate Thrillshare which we know is our new communication system platform that we're using as, as a town, which is great because I'm able to take the S'more newsletter, get it into Thrillshare, and then make sure that parents are receiving that not only through that email, but also notifications, text messaging, so that there's multiple ways for you to see that there is this communication out there, and then it just helps to increase that engagement with it. Likewise, the Hingham Public Schools website, the live feed portion, and the updates and news, so when you go into South School, you'll be able to see that that weekly newsletter is bookmarked there, it's live, so that way it's that first thing you can click on. And anything that's happening, we like to try to put it into that live feed section, which is on the, the right-hand side. Also, collaborate with the communications director. Heather Cashman has been of great help to myself and Ms. Driscoll being on board and reaching out to her for when we want to make sure that communication things that are happening with inside the building. Goal four is to strengthen our community engagement and communication by fostering partnerships with our caregiver community in order to create an inclusive, positive learning experience for all students. So for this, I thought about when I had seen the steps, the action steps that were there in the school improvement plan. This is sort of the what. We have all of these different platforms that we can communicate out. 
with, now what are we communicating out? Um, so we're trying to develop and we're working on developing parent communications that support students' academic, social, emotional progress, specifically using the common language, the philosophy of South School, adding a guidance and specialist section to our newsletter to continue to promote what we are doing behind the doors of South, and then also the continuation of toolbox and then some general parent information of things that have taken place that are um, sort of highlights and, and traditions at South School. Next one is to continue to meet the needs of new families that are joining the South community, especially, but not limited to our kindergarten families. There's a great outreach that starts taking place in the spring. We have the families in, we have that screening process, that screening process that takes place. There's a lot of summer work that gets done, having those different moments where kindergarten students are able to um, interact with one another through the PTO, organizing those events. Um, and then again, at the beginning of the school year, we had back to school nights for each um, grade level. And the way the model at South is that every family would meet with myself and Ms. Driscoll and the team, and then from there go and visit the classrooms. And the, one of the final highlights for this goal is to evaluate ways to distribute parent caregiver surveys that help to solicit feedback. We are at the point where we're sort of have our grounding, myself and Matriscal at South, and you know, always meeting with parents and making sure that we are maintaining the pulse of, of what has been in place, any changes that you know might want that parents might want to see, any changes that teachers might want to see, any changes that students might want to see. Flag football was that big one from the slide before. Um, any ways that we can solicit feedback and have that two-way communication happening for us is great. And the final goal for our school improvement plan is to promote an increased awareness of safety in and around the school, especially during arrival and dismissal. So it was interesting to, with all of these pieces, to have the school improvement plan over the summer and read through it and then actually start seeing a lot of these things coming to life. Um, and this one is, was great because we were able to sort of be outside, we're observing arrival, dismissal, and making sure that we are maintaining a safe environment during those times. So we have our back to school safety protocols. We discuss them at all school assemblies, school-wide meetings. At our back to school nights, we discuss it, um, our communications to families. And then also what we would like to do is build up our caregiver coffee chats and then tie it into with increased participation at PTO meetings. Um, our PTO meetings take place usually the first Friday of the month in the morning, and we want to increase that participation. So Mrs. Driscoll and I were thinking of ways that we could do that, and that might be to have like a coffee chat, knowing that we're there, anything that they want to bring to the table. Um, it would be just a nice way to continue that safety um, discussion. And the next thing on there is participation in monthly HPS security meetings so that we can continue to think of any changes that we might want to have take place, um, whether it's a physical plant or just signage, to make sure that we're always keeping safety and security at the forefront. One of the changes that we did make already with arrival is just streamlining the doors that students are accessing in the morning. So we actually have our front door for arrival, and we use one of our side doors for arrival. So that way it's more streamlined and adults are at those doors instead of you know, entering every grade level in previous years had had their own door that they would enter. So it's just been a good way because then we can actually get more adults on duties in those spots to really be greeting all kids. And you know, everybody's coming in, we're able to sort of have a pulse even on the school students coming in and you know, what they're bringing with them and you know, triaging anything that we might want to see in the morning as well. So. I know that I highlighted the emboldened ones, um, but certainly everything is, is a priority for us as we move along this school year. Um, and I'm sure that there might be some questions, so I'm happy to answer any. Thank you very much. Does anybody have any questions? Michelle? Question and a, yeah. and a comment. Um, how are you and Ms. Driscoll finding the transition um, based on this 
fabulous presentation. It seems like it's going smoothly. It, I really, it has yeah. been, right. It's been really nice because we, like I said, when we were reading through this in the summer and, and really taking stock of it, you don't know what these things look like at self. So it was so nice to actually unpack all of this and, and see everything sort of coming alive and, and flowing. So it actually has been a great transition. And you know, that's why I say, I'm like, I feel like our feet are kind of steady and you know, every day we're just you know, taking on different things, new things, trying to plan one or two days ahead. <laughs> uh, but everything's been going really well. Thank you for asking. That's really, that's, um, that's what I've been hearing from folks, um, parents I've talked to, um, a lot of tea, so yeah, they said really easy transition. There were big, big shoes to fill, and uh, and a lot of changes. But I, it does sound like things are going really quite well. So yeah, very nice. Yeah, um, was I gonna say? Yeah. Yep. And I will echo to what Michelle says, and I also just want to point out, I really like how you um, use that fifth grade leadership with the fifth graders every six days for football. I think it it's a great way to have the kids advocate for something that they want, and then mm -hmm. the kind of teaching, having them get involved and learning, you know what, how to make a plan going forward for something like that. I think it's great. Yeah. It, yeah, it, it's, and I think what's really nice too is that they see that, that it can work and then how do they bring that actually to the younger grades mm -hmm. to sort of be those role models and saying, okay, well, if you want to do this, what can you do? We can, you know, you, fourth graders was the next thing is um, fourth graders were promoting new soccer nets. So they did a great job. They convinced us. Um, Jen did a mini grant for a PTO, so new soccer nets are on their way. So it's really nice to see that they have, the, they, they see that their voice is being heard as well. Yeah, that's great. Yeah. I like that. It's great. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. I'd just like to say that we're thrilled to welcome Tara and Jen to the team. And uh, it's, been a, it's been a great year so far. So yeah. Thank you for all your work. Great. Thank you so much. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. Right the and then the second graders can bring in those baked goods that you're yeah. talking yeah. about. Yeah. I'm eat some. I want to try some. Yeah. Time to do the bake sale. <laughs> <laughs> Not a bad idea, Michelle. All right. Want to make a motion? Uh, sure. I will make a motion to uh, be accepting. I think they already it. did it. Um, it's 24. That's it. It's a new, it's a new it's one. New it's yep. All right. I will make a motion to approve the South Elementary School Improvement Plan for the years 24 to 26. I will second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? No. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, right. 10.2 to receive the Class of 2023 College Board Testing and Placement Report. Okay. And I just need to, before we introduce Heather, I have a mea culpa. So I was under the impression that all of the data had been received through the College Board, not understanding that some of the subgroup data is actually channeled through DESE. So you might have noticed uh, two blank spaces in your document, and uh, that was my over eagerness to get this uh, report out. And so Erica will um, share that out as soon as we receive it um, from DESE, and so didn't want you to think that was any mistake on Heather's part. That is all me. So. <laughs> We just want to thank you, Katie. Um, we just wanted to highlight and leave the charts in there blank in the report that you got so you knew like exactly what was going to come in the future. Mm -hmm. So that was purposeful. Um, so hi, everyone. Thanks for having me again. Thank Good to see everyone. Um, so tonight's report is about college testing and placement. Um, you will see uh, some of the data that I present is based on the cohort graduating class, and some of it is based on testing that happened in that school year, so may include more than the graduating class of 2024. So I'll try and highlight that, or I can clarify um, as we go through. It's also a snapshot of where we are. Um, data is amazing, but it's also just one part of what we do. We have a bunch of um, amazing students in our building, and they do things that are not captured in this report. So this is just a little bit of the flavor of what happens in terms of um, these particular measures. So the class of 2024 future plan
languages is the most popular next step for our student with about 92 percent um sorry 91 percent going on to four-year colleges on to two-year or specialized schools so specific training in a specific area or to a community college or associate's degree granting institution um, 1.7 are going to prep schools typically typically those are people um, <coughs> who either feel like they're just not quite ready to leave high school they might want to solidify their academics for some reason um, or we will have some students who are seeking an opportunity in sports and they want to mature physically as well as academically and so they might do a prep year um, we have Close to 2% going on straight to employment or doing apprenticeship for a trade, um, which so the apprenticeship here, most of those kids doing a gap year are going to go on to some sort of education. After that, they're just taking a year to either do a service project or concentrate on earning more money for school or whatever it is, or some of them are just making a decision as to what their next step is gonna be. And then we have another 1% that is truly undecided and they don't have firm plans when they leave us. Uh, all right, so that's, just represented graphically and that gives you kind of um, five years of history so you can see that it's pretty similar from year to year um, college going is a little bit up for four-year college going this year but it's pretty steady within the past five years and the decade as well um, this graph just gives us kind of like the trend line on each group so we see that undecided ticked up a little bit but again um it looks like a big line but that goes from like 0.5 percent to one percent and that's a couple kids <laughs> so um we just wanted to kind of represent what's going on graphically there because it's a little bit easier to see then when we talk about our population of students who are applying to colleges and where they're applying um, we see overlap in the schools that are applied to and the ones that are most attended, but we are, um, it's always a counseling department goal to kind of track where our kids are applying and see trends so that we can make sure we educate ourselves if we, you know, um, in the past several years, we've seen a lot of Southern schools become more popular. So we want to make sure that we're keeping up with what the Southern schools are doing. Um, I was looking at this when I was preparing the report and Ohio is starting to be um, popular as is Indiana. So we're like, okay, are we doing a Midwest swing now? So we just wanna make sure that we're staying on top of the trends so that we're knowledgeable about where our students want to apply and can help them expand um, the breadth of where they apply if they so choose. Uh, so we have UMass Amherst, Syracuse, Elon, UNH, UVM, um, as the most applied to schools, you can see all of those there. And then our next slide gives us they applied. Sometimes we will see a trend in the expansion of where they're applying before we see an expansion of where they're actually going. Um, but UMass and Syracuse are the first two there. Ohio pops up there with Miami University. Um, and we are seeing some of the Southern schools kind of creep up into the numbers of where our students are going. So um, I think people are looking for some warm weather. <laughs> they also tend to be a little bit less expensive, some of the Southern schools. So that's always attractive to families as well. Um, then we like to see not only the individual schools where our students go, but are there trends in terms of areas of the country? So m most of our kids are staying in Massachusetts um, and then New York, Pennsylvania, Connecticut, and Ohio and North Carolina round out kind of the top five areas of where our kids choose to attend school. And then you can see kind of the graphic line with all the different states that they actually go to. So there's a big range, um, but a concentration of where they land. All right, SAT scores. Um, our SAT scores have remained just about where they have been in the last several years. So for the critical reading and writing, we had a mean score of 618. Again, this is between one and um, 
not one, sorry, <laughs> up to 1600, up to 800 in each subtest. So there are, we're back down to two subtests, the reading and writing and the math, um, and those are between zero and 800. Um, so we have a mean score of 618 as compared to 563 in the state and 507 in the nation. When we look at the math, math scores, we have a 600, 545 in uh, Massachusetts and 487 in the nation, and then the composite score 1218 for Hingham compared to 1120 for the state and 994 nationally. So our students are doing well with tests um, for the SAT in particular. We can see the trend is pretty consistent. Um, the little bump in 2021 was one of the years where most schools, because of COVID, were still test optional, which meant most of them did not need or expect a test. And so you saw a bump in mean score because the only kid, not the only, but most of the kids who were taking it felt that that was a very, very strong score for them. So they wanted to take it, even though they didn't need to, just to help their admissions. Um, admissions trends in the past couple years the pendulum is starting to swing back a little bit to everybody being test optional to starting to require some tests. It was led by MIT. It's been followed by a couple more Ivy League schools. So as we meet each other again in the coming years, we'll see if that fully swings back and generalizes to more of the schools or if it stays more of an um, elite college Ivy League type of situation. So those are our SAT scores. The ACT is also a college entrance test. It is just given by a different company than the college board. Um, it tends to be a little more achievement and content based versus reasoning based. And so students um, can take either one. <coughs> Colleges in the country really don't care which test. If they want an entrance test, um, they will take either one. So it really, um, students should play to their strengths. And that's why we offer in the sophomore year a pre-ACT, so they get exposure to taking a test of the ACT type, and then the PSAT when they're juniors. So they have exposure to both types without them counting, they're just practice tests, so they can decide for them which one feels better for me. For the vast majority of students, statistically, they will score very similarly on both tests, but there are some kids who one just feels a lot more comfortable, the style of the test, um, than the other, and so they may choose to just take one or the other. We have some kids that take both and then compare their score. So so it's really um, a conversation with the student, their counselor, their family to see what they're comfortable with. Um, so if you look at our scores, sorry, do you mind going back to the <laughs> um, We, in English, our mean was 29.4. Possible 36. So scored very differently, but we continue to do really well. Um, I think where you see the score go down again, we had um, a little spike in the number of kids taking the test. And now it's kind of as test optional has become a little more popular, fewer kids have taken the test. So we'll see in the next coming years if that becomes a little bit, bit more popular. Um, so then the graph is our next one. Thank you. Um, we're going up. So that's good, but we've been fairly consistent. Um, all right, our next testing cadre is advanced placement exams. These exams are three or four hour exams in specific subjects. Um, we offer a wide variety of AP classes at the high school. Um, depending on how a student scores, the exams, you can score between one and five on an exam. Three is considered proficient. And depending on how a student scores and which college they choose to matriculate at, the college may give them college credit for a particular score. We're seeing more colleges requiring a four or a five on an exam in order to award credit. We're also seeing fewer colleges giving credit um, and letting that not be made up once you get to the school. So in the past, you may have come in with five AP 
scores and earn credit and matriculated as a sophomore. Now we're seeing colleges um, say, that's great. You can take more advanced classes, but you still have to take the same number of classes. Um, so they're not letting you kind of become a sophomore. They're just letting you start in more difficult classes. Um, so we had 614 exams taken by 320 students. Um, we had 25 classes offered at the high school. like the graduating class cohort versus everyone who took an AP exam. 57% um, of students took an AP exam in their senior year. All right. We'll go into demographics in a minute because we do have that data. The College Board and, the, and DESE kind of break down all the subgroups for the SAT, um, and that takes a little bit of time, whereas the AP program all of that is available now. So these are some of the offerings that we have in AP land, all the different breadth and variety of classes that we have. And we're um, very thoughtful, like environmental science is a new class. Um, so as new AP classes come up or classes that have been offered that we haven't offered before um, that have existed, if we have a cohort of students that are interested, we try and have conversations and see what are there any more AP classes that we would like to um, offer to our students. The next slide is AP enrollments. This just kind of gives you a snapshot of who takes what. Um, statistics usually has the most amount of kids in it. Um, but environmental science, even though that was new, that was very, 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 very popular, which is why we added it, because we knew there was a lot of demand for it. Um, English and US history and Euro are always very popular. So you can kind of see which um, classes most of our students take. Then moving on to the demographics, this just kind of breaks everything down by subgroup. Um, when you have fewer than 10 students, we don't report any norms so that we can't identify individual kids, um, but we do pretty well in terms of mean score. Um, it's pretty close no matter what subgroup you're in. So that's good, it's pretty consistent. Um, one thing that I do want to point out is when you talk about um, Students with disabilities taking high level classes, AP, um, we had 38 students with disabilities take 68 exams last year. We had one of those students was an on, on an active IEP, the rest were on 504 plans, and we had 10 students of the kids on 504s, 10 of them had had an IEP previously. Um, so by the time that they were in the senior year taking the exams, they were no longer on an IEP, but they had that in their history. So just want to point that out. Um, the next slide tells us the kind of trajectory of where we're going in terms of number of students who hit the proficiency level, a score of three. And so it jumped up last year, which was great. And then AP scholars, um, the College Board will give students certain designations if you take a num certain number of AP exams and score at a of at least 3.25 and a three or higher on four or more exams. Scholar with distinction is an average grade of at least 3.5 on all exams taken and grades of three or higher on five or more exams. Um, they used to have a couple more levels, but they were seeing that that was adding to students' stress and encourage, encouraging them to kind of overextend and take a number of AP exams that wasn't quite, um, it was just causing a little too much stress and anxiety. So they took out the higher number of exam awards to have people focus on where they actually felt comfortable and not overextend. Um, you will see the AP Seminar and Research Certificate. So there's a two class series, AP Seminar and AP Research. And that 
Um, we start AP seminar. You can enter that in your sophomore year if you would like. It's available all years, but that's the first time a student can take it. And it really looks at problem solving, researching, and creativity. And so it will give a general um, theme and prompt to students, and then they learn how to research and present on their angle of that particular subject um, or theme. So you will see a lot of variety in that. And so that's been a very, very popular series of classes for our students. Um, and it also really helps them learn how to do research, which is really the basis of college level work. Um, so that's great. And they have, you can own a caps, earn a capstone diploma if you do that two class series. So. We've had four students do that, and 12 didn't quite hit the diploma, but they took both of the classes and they got the research certificate. So 12 of our students were honored in that way. Um, this graph just kind of shows AP scholars and how we've gone in the past several years graphically. And then National Merit Scholarship. Um, there's two thresholds a commended student and a semifinalist, and that's based on your PSAT scores in your junior year. Um, so if you score within a certain high percentage of the students in your state, you can get recognized as a semifinalist, um, or you can be commended. So last year, um, this year we happen to have a couple, but I'll, I won't, that's a spoiler alert for next year. Um, so we had 3% of the class this year that was honored with National Merit Scholarship opportunities. Um, that kind of shows the graph a little bit differently. And then I added one slide that didn't make it into your presentation because I was just doing some thinking and did a last minute slide add. So we've been thinking as a district, how do we expand college level work access to more students? And we have um, used the dual enrollment program. We have um, Quincy College and then, oh, is it? Um, with them. So here you see for this school year, so this is not last year's graduating class cohort, but this is this school year, we offer dual enrollment classes in each of these areas. Now what happens with that, the really quick dual enrollment primer, um, every student taking that class is in the dual enrollment and they are eligible to apply for dual enrollment credit. So that is college credit and high school credit at the same time by taking the same course. So they're Hingham High School's courses, they're not anyone else's courses. We've partnered in with the most part Quincy College and so Quincy College has said, yes, what you submitted to us would earn credit for us. So um, they, everyone sits in the class, they take it, it's dual enrollment, it's considered college level in terms of being able to earn dual enrollment credit, and then the student can choose, and it's at the very end of the year, I think like May 30th might be the deadline, they can choose to pay for college credits and get the college credit. So not every student in the class is going to do that, but every student got the same opportunity by just by sitting in the classroom. Um, so that's a way where you're not in an AP class, but you're still getting exposure to some college level work. And I'll interject and say that the college credits are about as inexpensive as they come. Oh, yes. So it's a really nice opportunity for kids to save a little bit of money. Yes. And, and I have a question about that. So you mentioned with the AP courses that some more and more schools are saying, okay, that's great, you're coming in, we're not going to give you credits, so, but you're going to start at higher yeah. level courses. Is it different with this? Like, do, do these credits translate into you go to the school and It depends get... on the college that you go to. Mm -hmm. So you've earned credit at Quincy College, and then Quincy has a list of schools that take their college credit. Um, so the student has to then approach the college that they're matriculating at and say, I have this dual enrollment credit. Will you accept it? And sometimes it could depend on the student's major. It could depend on the particular class. Um, I, I noticed a, a, a boo-boo on the report. Um, we have kids taking sociology and psychology. We actually have a large number of kids taking psychology and sociology, and somehow those got wiped to zero. So I can um, update that tomorrow and get you those numbers. But those are very popular classes. It's adding to your numbers. Yes. Yeah. Great. <laughs> Can I ask a question? Yeah. So this, the dual enrollment, is that any level, like, does it have to be honors? Does it have to be 
or is it any it level? It kind of depends on the course that we offer. So like all level three pre-calculus, so college prep, sorry, um, pre-calculus classes are dual enrollment. Um, our biotechnology, it's level two and level three, so honors and college prep together. Um, yeah, so it kind of depends, but it's not just, it depends on the class and which level it is for us, yeah. I just wanted to explain the process for yeah, getting a course certified. We have to submit um, our full syllabus. And, you know, I know, for example, for our biotechnology course, we actually, it turns out, use the very same book used in the college classes, do all of the same labs. We had to make zero adjustments to um, our, our science curriculum because there was a nearly identical um, overlap. And so um, the same is true of the other courses as well. So um, we can say with confidence that we're off offering college level um, courses and materials because um, there's so much overlap in the approach. So those classes are taught here in the district by our teachers. Yeah, mm -hmm. so our teachers needed to go through an application process where they had to submit their credentials, submit their syllabus, and so on. And um, so it's our teachers teaching the very same course that we have always taught, um, but they've been uh, certified as instructors at Quincy College or UMass or um, at uh, Middlesex. And um, we had to get the uh, curriculum credentialed as well. So. I just I want to add a, a thank you. I know you guys have been working really hard, and just from last year to this year, you've added a lot of classes to that dual enrollment list. Mm -hmm. And um, having a senior, I know that for many of them, this was an excellent way to have that college credit and that pride that they got that college credit without the intensity of the AP option. Yeah. And it's been, um, I think for us, it's been a great option to have, and kids are excited about it. That's great. That's and exactly what we points. intended. Um, one is that um, students can figure out which colleges they're going to cross-reference the Quincy yep. College list before um, making that payment, which is excellent. And then um, the other um, point I just wanted to make is that we'll continue um, to expand that list as we can. So. Great. And then I think our next slide is just a thank you and to see if you have any additional questions. Anything else? No? Okay. Amazing. Yeah, okay. of course. Um, thank you uh, sure. for this overall. Um, and thank you for giving the data on the IEP. I just wanted to make sure I understood it. So it was one it, within the senior class, yep. one student that's on an active IEP yep. is taking an IEP class. That was last year, right? Uh, la yep. Okay, mm -hmm. sorry, last year's. Yes. 10. Uh, students that had have or last year had an existing 504 had a previous me, IEP it was or on, just in general page. 10 people that so no it was the so 38 total students with disabilities one of those was an active IEP 37 of them were active 504 plans okay I thought you said something around 10. so yeah so of the 37 that were active 504 plans 10 of those students had previously, okay. before they were on a 504 plan, been on an IEP at some point during their schooling with us. Okay, and there may have been, um, which is fine, you have the data, but there may have been other students that were on an IEP at some point that aren't currently on a, weren't on a 504, but then at 38 and wouldn't show up in that data. I'm trying um, to get, because this is definitely a common question that yeah, comes around. Yeah. Um, so I'm not asking that we have to get that, I guess yeah. I'm trying to say is that, is it fair to say that there's a possibility that, you know, someone that in first grade through third grade was on yeah. IEP and wasn't on a 504, let's say, since third grade. Yes. Now was a senior last year. Yes. Could have, okay. That is absolutely possible. Okay. Um, I yeah. haven't drilled no, down no, no, that yeah. much I'm, into I'm, that, I'm not, but that I is possible. Yeah. Okay. But those, those were students, that number yeah. is students who had approved accommodations by yeah. the college board which means they were yep. on an active plan, yep. okay. right? So That's there could incredible. be kids who no longer have any accommodations whatsoever who had been yep. on some sort of plan in the right, exactly. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, that's a great question, thanks. I'd also like to add just one other point, and that is I'd love to take a look at our dual enrollment data yeah. as well and see how yep. many students um, you know, currently on IEPs are enrolled in those classes. Um, the other thing too is on a college application, um, there is a section um, for listing not only AP courses, but also uh, for listing <coughs> dual enrollment courses. So um, it, you do very much get credit for being enrolled yes. in um, the college level courses that we offer. Yeah. 
Thanks, Thank everyone. Thank you very much. All right. Um, 10.3. Um, I thought we could talk about buses again. So, sorry about that. I, um, I moved it up to unfinished business and forgot to take it off here. So, we are not talking about it again. <laughs> we didn't like what happened at 9.4. <laughs> Um, 10.4, um, to approve grants and donations and act as appropriate. I did see that we had some. Yeah, so I have two uh, grant award notices, which I just realized I did put a date on, so you can imagine that it's today's date that this memo is being, is being put forward. Um, the first one is for our ESSA grant. It's the Every, Every Student Succeeds Act. Um, Title I, we received $76,408. That money is intended to close educational achievement gaps. That's what the purpose of Title I. Um, only one eligible private school requested Title I funds, and that is the New England Hebrew Academy. They'll get $3,504.95. Uh, Title II is meant to increase student achievement, improve teacher effectiveness, and increase the number of teachers and leaders <coughs> who are effective in improving student academic achievement and to provide low-income and minority students with greater access to effective teachers. Title IV is meant to support well-rounded educational opportunities, safe and healthy students, and to support effective use of technology, we will get $10,000 in Title IV funding, uh, and we will share some of those funds, 1,500 approximately, with Notre Dame, Old Colony Montessori, and St. Paul's. Thank you. The next one, same deal, is our Perkins grant. Um, the, the code is called Strengthening Career and Technical Education Secondary. Uh, we've been approved for $17,575 from that grant, and we will use those funds to further our pilots of pathways programs. Excellent, thank you. Do we approve, do we make, I don't think we do. I think we do have to, it seems weird because they are part of so, a, like a yeah. government program, but that's yeah. technically yeah. a grant. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Can I ask a question about that one? Is New England Hebrew Academy in Hugo? No. no, so Title I, um, the pro share is different for Title okay. II and four than it is from Title I. So okay. Title I is based on your residence. Okay. Um, it, whereas the um, pro share um, for Title II and Title IV is for um, <coughs> students who attend local okay. private schools. So. Great, thank you. All of the entitlement funds uh, do yeah. something a little bit different. It makes right. it interesting. So. Do you want a motion for each title? Do you have to approve them? I don't, I don't know. This is more of a notification. This is more of a notification. Yeah. We've yeah. shared information in the past about um, the amount you received. Um, so it's more of a notification to okay. you um, that, that we have received these dollar amounts. So. Okay. 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 All right. Thank you. Um, all right. 10.5 to approve surplus and act as appropriate. I did see a few there. Yeah. Um, so. For those, I think the librarians at Costa and the other elementary schools, as well as the high school, are doing a little bit of clean and cleaning up. Um, so we've been receiving every week uh, more items for um, for decommissioning, including um, books that are no longer in circulation, that are damaged, and um, um, so they provided a list here for, for those books for your approval. And in terms of the maintenance department, they're also doing a little bit of a cleanup as well in terms of making space for um, the foster building stuff that we want to keep. Mm -hmm. um, finally, we've had desks and chairs and everything from the middle school, the old middle school. <laughs> oh. um, so we're trying to get rid of a lot of that to make space. And there's been storage in some places that have not been the most safe as well. So we're getting rid of all of those. And we're happy to say that um, Mr. Nian got a, a, um, a company to actually give us a dumpster for free, oh. and they're converting all the metal. 
So we may get some checks back for the middle that has oh. been converted. So, mm. so it should be a nice way to clean up and to... And environmentally friendly. And then yeah. to recycle yeah. mm -hmm. at the same time, right? Great. I have the name of a monster company. Give them a shout out. Yeah, yeah. Yes. 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 Definitely. <laughs> All right. Um, I will make a motion to declare a surplus library books from the Hingham High School Library and the four elementary schools listed and to authorize the high school and elementary librarians to dispose of them at the least cost to Hingham. I will second. Any discussion? Matt, you look like you wanted to say something. Nope. No. <laughs> Bye. 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 You post? Okay. Thank you. And then the meeting. That, that's yeah. what I was going to say. I wasn't sure. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. I will make a motion to declare a surplus items listed above and to authorize the executive director of business support services to dispose of them at the least possible cost to the district. I will second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? No. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Awesome. All right. Um, moving over to item 11, subcommittee and project reports and warrants signed. Matt? Uh, so we will. We are in the process of scheduling our uh, special education subcommittee meeting. It will take place uh, one of the first two weeks in December <coughs> in advance of uh, our school committee meeting on the 16th, where we'll be getting an update uh, from student services. Uh, East School Council had our meeting today, this afternoon. I missed it, so uh, Jonathan said he would provide me an update. Uh, and half had their monthly meeting last week. Carrie? Uh, middle School Council is meeting next Monday. Um, so last last week, the week before last, um, Tim and Al and I went to the MASC conference. Mm -hmm. um, it was great, as always. Um, attended a number of interesting panel discussions and yeah, got some good takeaways to bring back to the subcommittees. Um, about Title IX with the new regs and um, collective bargaining. And the theme of the conference seemed to be communication and um, kind of the general session was on how to listen effectively um, and uh, also to have discussions with people who might have different worldviews in a way that everyone keeps their digni dignity. It kind of reminded me of the book, the high conflict book that we all read last year. And um, if anyone's interested in it, it's called The Dignity and Index. And it was kind of just a way to frame those discussions and, and think about things when you disagree with someone. So it was, it was really interesting to read. Um, and then we, it was nice to see a familiar face. There was a, a panel on school and municipal collaboration, and John Ferris was a panelist. <laughs> so it was fun to go and support him and uh, hear about that. Um, the resolutions all passed. <laughs> so um, the expired, expiring resolutions were approved as a slate. Um, the School Bus Armed Surveillance Act and the expansion and capacity, uh, the VOTEC program, so those passed without any debate. Um, there are a couple of minor amendments to the other ones, but um, but it was good and it was it was very well run this year. It was under two hours, so yeah, under two hours, great. Right? <laughs> <Yep. laughs> Michelle, um, just uh, high school council meets to Wednesday. Meets on Wednesday. Yes, that's all I have. Though. Allie. Um, well, Carrie I did the update from MASC, but Carrie, Tim, and I did kind of split up some of the different yes. sessions. So I attended a few on belonging and inclusion, which were really good. Um, and same, I'll type out some of my notes and share with anyone Great. appropriate. Thanks. Um, just that there are warrants in the packet. Thanks. Um, as Katie mentioned, Jen and I uh, went with Aisha and Katie to the Town Governance Academy last week to talk about the school department. I'm going tomorrow to talk about the school committee. So they're talking about governance tomorrow. So I'll do like a 10 minute spiel for them tomorrow, which was really nice. It was great. It was, a, you know, about 10 people. Uh, it was They had some good questions. Um, and that's all I had to report. Um, all right. So item 12, anything under 48 hours? No. We've got um, our next two school committee meetings, December 2nd at 630. And then Monday, December 16th at 6.30. Um, and with that, I will take a motion to adjourn. I will make a motion to adjourn. I will second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 We're adjourned.